Good morning, everybody. You can see I've got headphones on today, uh, which means I can take them off now because I have confirmed that the audio is actually live. And it's a little distracting hearing yourself uh, with that slight delay in there. So good morning. Um, welcome to my live stream here. And um, I'm really curious to hear where you're all joining from. So go ahead and drop into the chat uh, where you're joining from and uh, say hi. So it's good to see everybody here. Thank you all for joining. Um, we got a couple new things that we're going to try today, and I'm going to try to uh, not completely mess up the audio this time. And one of the couple of the things I learned last time, one, really important to have a way to monitor your, monitor your audio, it turns out. And the uh, I did not have that last time, which was the fatal flaw in that plan. So this time I've got headphones plugged in. Um, of course, not into the Mini itself because there is no headphone jack. Um, so instead, what I've got is I've got the uh, the Mini plugged into this monitor, which has a headphone jack on it. And then I can actually see um, or hear through that, through the headphones to see what's going on. So uh, that's a better plan this time around. Um, one of the other things that I heard last time was that this setup here is really confusing and it's hard to follow. I completely appreciate that. And yeah, I was chaining three of them together. So this time what I did was I actually um, drew up a diagram showing how everything was connected. And I'm not actually sure that makes it better, uh, more or less confusing. So um, this is what I'm this is what I'm working with today. It's a little bit different than last time. So if we if we look, we've got the two minis plugged in. Um, I've got my test one again because I don't want to worry about messing up the live stream, especially when I try to go update this one. It's running into input four on the main ATEM mini. And then I've got my two cameras here. And I forgot to mention this last time. So my two camera angles, I'm actually feeding them into both ATEMs. And that way I can actually show um, the same angle regardless of which one I'm using. And I can like do my test, uh, my, my trial on the test mini with the same camera angles I'm actually showing you on the stream. So they're actually just going through one of the little cheap HDMI splitters that I used in a, another video into both ATEM minis. And I've got now two laptops on the desk. Uh, I've got my main laptop, which is I'm using to, to monitor the chat and the stream, as well as I'll be showing you some stuff on there. And I've got my my new laptop, which is the one that I'm showing this picture from, which is the, the what I call the chat laptop, because the other thing it does is I can actually now show comments from the chat on the stream. So um, let's go ahead and catch up on the stream um, on the chat rather. So that's one of the other things I learned is that it turns out uh, the way I was doing the chat last time by showing you by showing the actual chat window on the side, I think that's what kind of messed me up. So because I had to like remember where the where in the scroll position I was in order to, to be able to go through the comments in order, I couldn't really like scroll to the bottom to see what you were saying right now. So instead, I have a totally new setup here for chat. So let me just go through a couple of the uh, the the hellos here. Um, so we've got uh, we've got uh, James from the UK. We've got Zach from West Palm Beach. We've got Jan from Denmark, Ireland. Aaron from Ireland. Good morning from Germany, from Brazil, San Francisco, New York, people from all over. This is fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining. And I hope this is not a terribly inconvenient time for, for all of you. Um, Norway, Michigan, Belgium, Portugal, Dallas, Netherlands, and uh, wow, more Denmark, Netherlands, Australia. That's, uh, isn't it like a middle of the night there for you right now that's uh thanks for thanks for tuning in um got uk okay um people are coming coming from all over which is super fantastic thank you all to uh for joining so um as you can see that was uh, a totally new way of doing chat so that's what i want to talk about first because i think it's pretty cool i'm pretty excited about it um so let me show you a little bit about uh, a little bit behind the scenes about how that works. And in order to do that, I'm going to actually have to uh, switch and show you my computer screen. So um, I'm going to first show you uh, 
what I'm working with on that laptop. So if you back back to this wide shot, I've got my my main like controller laptop here, which is where again I'm I can see what's happening in the chat like in real time this time, current, and that's not what I'm pushing out to the stream. Separately over here is another laptop with it is that same window. So like if you take this URL, it's actually opened up in a browser over here. It's just full screen browser. And what this is, is there's a whole bunch of custom CSS and JavaScript on this page that turns it into this sort of format. So let me go and show you um, what's going on with that. Um, why is my head cropped off? Okay. <laughs> I think I I think I left a left a mask on there. So um, there we go. Uh, nope. Come on. Where's the mask coming from? Seriously. Too many too many things going on. Well, um, yes. There we go. Okay, that's better. Sorry about that. So um, yeah, live streaming sounds hard says uh says mitch so here's what's here's what's going on this is a browser if you just look like this is chrome in a browser and it's actually the um the url is the regular like pop out chat now what i've done is i've installed a chrome extension which lets me add um custom css and javascript to this page now i should also mention this was not my idea uh this was because I was trying to like do it the more complicated way of using the API to pull out chat messages. And then um, I found this video by um, by uh, ROJ behind the scenes channel. And he was doing this live and live coded a bunch of this. And I was like, that is exactly what I want. Let me go and tweak it a little bit and make it make it look like the way I want it to work. So um, most of the CSS is from him. So uh, thanks so much for doing that, because that's just that was that saved me a ton of time. I'm not the best at uh, design. So awesome. Um, so the way this works is basically there's a bunch of CSS in here that you can change to decide what colors these are. And like uh, it, it creates this new like section on the top that you can when you click down here, which is the actual live chat, um, it will then like pull that text from there and push it up into this, this top section. And the trick to making this work with the ATEM Mini is using Luma key. So in his, in the original video, he was doing Chroma key, and I was trying to make that work, and it wasn't quite uh, it wasn't quite working right. And I couldn't get the edges uh, just right. So um, I ended up being like, well, if I switch it to a Luma key which is uh, instead of keying out a color, it just works on the brightness. And if I make sure that nothing in the text is actually black, then if I like clamp down the threshold to just pull out the black, then it'll work. So that is, uh, that's what's going on. So that's why this background is black. Now, in order to make sure there was no black up here, I had to make sure that this text is just slightly higher than black. It's like a really dark gray. And one of the other tricks was people's photos I have to make sure there's no black in those as well. And you can see that people often have dark avatars. Um, so I have a, uh, how do I end up doing it? I think I did it with a, uh, a CSS filter. Uh, we go look at the inspect element here and look at this image. Uh, sorry, this is so small. Um, then what's going on here is I have a, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Somewhere in here, there is some CSS that does a little, uh, oh, there it is. It's It creates like a, an overlay on top and it actually puts a very faint white uh, layer over that image. That way, if anybody does have black in their image, then, um, wow, you can probably hear that garbage truck outside. Sorry about that. So if anybody does actually have black in their image, this then bumps it up to make it slightly gray. So that's the trick to make that working. Um, and then um, the, uh, so back over into the mini. Um, wow, I'm sorry about that, all that noise. This is the problem with being in a city. So if I show you the, uh, the what's going on with the, the key here, um, is that in focus? 
close enough. What's going on with the key here is um, when I want to show the chat, of course, I've got a macro for it. Um, I have to make this full screen again. Actually, let me make that not full screen first. So the key here is actually just taking my laptop screen using Luma key on it, and then it's positioning it, right? So it starts by positioning it down. This, is, this would be normal. It starts by moving it down, and then it uh, crops the top a little bit to get rid of some of that stuff. And then uh, when this is full screen, so that's, let me load the, yeah. Then when it's full screen, um, we've got, we've got now the, the chat and you can see if I move the, oops, if I move the position up, you can see that's just the, re the rest of the window. So that's what's going on there. And you know, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm also a web developer. Uh, Ledger says I'm a web developer. I wouldn't, wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, that's my problem as well, is that I was going the developer route of, well, if I use the API to pull out the YouTube chat, then uh, I can like, you know, represent it in my, on a web page or something and green screen it, but this was so much easier. So super cool. Um, Tim says, uh, could this be done using a browser on an iPad? Kind of. So the problem with the iPads is um, the problem with the iPads is they're not 16 by they're not um, actually full HD 1920 by 1080 they're like a different aspect ratio so you always end up with this little black border on the side um, you could just crop that out also it's it's going to be black so it'll key out with your Luma key so it would be fine it would you wouldn't get to use the full width so you'll have to compromise either because um, either by uh, showing you, you won't be able to get your graphics all the way to the left, or if you use the flying key to move it to the left, then you wouldn't be able to use the far right end of the screen. But it's probably fine, and yeah, that would work. Um, the I, w I ended up using a computer for this because then I can actually like type in here as well, and it's a little bit easier to, to deal with, but either way works just as well. Um, so the, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that was a, a neat little trick, and I'm pretty happy to be using this now, oh yeah, the other part about this that makes this also really useful is, um, let me go back to, not that computer, that computer. Um, with the garbage truck finish, finish passing, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Zach says, check the audio on your headphones. Um, I'm sure it was, a, it was a little bit loud, but uh, that's because there was a garbage truck in the alleyway and uh, now it's gone. So that the other part about this is the um, the when I when I show one in here, then it ticks it off green, and that means I can actually see like where I am in the chat, even if I'm scrolling. So um, that again is a lot more useful than having to remember where I am in the little scroll bar window. So, um, with all that out of the way, um, let me know if you have any more questions about how the chat works. Otherwise, I'm going to keep saying hi to people um, and looking for some questions. So, um, the uh, we are where are we? Where are we in the chat? So, uh, Joe says. Can't wait to watch the playback after my next two meetings. Hope, hope you keep doing these. Uh, thanks for joining, Joe. You will see this later when you are watching the playback. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so Coley says, hello from Poland. Tim says, I checked my ATEM Mini Pro order yesterday and I'm number 70 in the queue. Yeah, that's awesome. So the way this is working is, uh, the way that, the, that this works is they are manufacturing them as fast as they can and shipping out small numbers of them to all of the distributors all around the world as soon as they're ready, right? And then the distributors get like small batches in and they've got backlogs of orders. So you want to uh, make sure you get in that line as fast as you can so that you get yours. Don't wait for the websites to show that they're in stock because they will never show in stock because there are people are, there's too many orders compared to how many people want them. Um, So, uh, where, where are we? Uh, Admus says, Wi-Fi sharing from the phone data 
um, yeah, you can totally share your phone Wi-Fi to the A10 Mini and stream over that. That's a great a great idea. Uh, Daryl says, is it possible to do a mix minus with the A10 Mini Pro? Um, I don't think so. Not really. Like the audio, there's only one audio out, and that is um, that is just like the program audio. So whatever your audio is, it's going out via all the outputs. So there's no like separate. Um, you can't really control what audio is going to which output because you've got these these three outputs, right? Ethernet, the live stream, uh, USB recording or USB webcam, plus the HDMI. I would absolutely love if the HDMI could be the audio out could be controlled separately from the program audio out because then you could do this mix minus. You could send all but one audio input out of the HDMI, and that way you could uh, actually no, I don't want it out of the HDMI. I want it out of the USB webcam because then you can use the A10 Mini as an input into Zoom, but showing your actual um, but but not feeding your guests back into themselves, right? So that would be super cool. Um, Probably not likely to happen. Don't really know. Um, Zach says, uh, do your mix minus first in an audio mixer. Yeah, like that's the real way to do it. That's the the pro way to do it. Um, but as you might be able to tell from my desk, I don't actually have an audio mixer anywhere on my desk because my A10 Mini is my audio mixer because I like using it for that because it's just easier for me. So... Um, there was another audio question down there somewhere, but uh, I lost track of it. Um, uh, Mark says, hi, Mark. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, this is actually Mark's t-shirt from one of his conferences. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I was wondering how to achieve this kind of chat thing. This is, uh, normally you'll see this in software like Ecamm Live, or you can do it with OBS too, a few different ways. And, um, that's like, in or, but in order to use that, you have to be doing, you're using your computer as the encoder and the switcher. And I don't like doing that stuff in software. At least I don't like doing the, the video processing in software. I don't mind creating graphics in software. Um, like, as you can see, this obviously this chat's coming from a, from a computer, um, but I don't want the video feeds to be going through the software. Um, so I'd rather have that in the hardware, which is why I have the A10 Mini in, at all. Um, so, uh, oh, Zach says, how about doing a chat display app for us non-coders? Yeah, I should mention, you don't need to be a coder in order to actually use this thing. So um, I will drop a link to the, uh, I'm just gonna drop a link in the chat to the video or to the code that I, that I uh, have. You have to be able to, um, oh, hey, my lights just changed. That means somewhere down here, there's a super chat. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you for the super chat. Um, as you can tell when people super chat, my lights changed color to the color of the chat. And also great demonstration of the uh, chat feature, the little uh, dollar amount appears here as well. So thank you so much, Anthony. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, Anthony says, thank you for sharing. Can't wait to get my ATEM Mini Pro and use it at my church. That is awesome. Thank you so much for the super chat. So um, yeah, if you want to actually use this uh, chat feature, you do not need to know how to code. You just need to be able to uh, copy and paste and install a browser extension. So I'm going to just drop a link in the chat to, to this project. Um, I haven't updated the screenshots. This was uh, the screenshots are from when I was still doing the chroma key. Um, but this is the, the um, instructions. So if you go here, you'll need to install the um, you'll need to install the um, which, which computer am I showing now? This this computer. So you need to make sure you install the uh, Styler Pro browser extension, and then uh, you have to basically just copy and paste these two files. So you just go here, copy that text into the top part, copy the JavaScript into the bottom part, click Run, and then here are the settings for the key. So it's not too bad. You don't need to know how to code to, to actually use it. I was just demonstrating how I arrived at the solution. Um, cool. So, um, where were we in the chat? Yeah, uh, uh, I think your way with Luma is better because of the photos in the profiles. Yeah, I didn't like chroma keying and risking that someone's going to have that green or a, a close green in the profile picture, and bumping the blacks makes that work pretty well. 
Uh, Zach says audio sounds great. Have you done any tweaking in the A10 Mini? I do. Yeah, I have a lot of set a lot of um, tweaks in the A10 Mini. Um, I can't show the. Yes, I can. I can show you that screen here. Um, this is the. So this is the setting for. Um, let me go back to. This here's my A10 Mini that's running the stream right now, um, and the audio. What I've got is here's the, the audio. It's actually running from. Um, if I go back to, if I go back to this angle. So there is a microphone right up there. There it is, and uh, the microphone is running into the camera, and it's just a little. Um, it's a little, I think it's a Movo brand, and it's just a little eighth inch mic into the camera. The camera is then feeding the audio into over HDMI into this input one on the ATEM. And um, so I've gotten here, you can see I've done quite a bit of um, tweaking with the expander and the compressor. And I really like this graph. This, this honestly, uh, seeing this graph has made this whole concept of um, audio processing make more sense to me. I do not have an audio engineering background. And uh, this is just like, oh, now I understand what the threshold does and what the compressor does. Because you can actually see how it's shaping the audio. So when I'm not talking, you'll see that it actually drops the gain. And that gets rid of a lot of that background noise. Now, when there was that truck outside, um, the truck was above that threshold. So it was not cutting it out, which is why you heard it so much. And there's not a lot I can do about that because it was just a very loud sound in here. Um, it's just to give you a sense, it's like literally 10 feet away from me. I just have a wall in between. Um, so that's the audio processing I'm doing. Go back here. Oops. And uh, cool. Um, Austin says, any thoughts on how to incorporate the ATEM Mini into a remote live stream setup where you can't connect hardline to ethernet. Yeah, um, I'm planning on doing a video about this because there's some pretty cool um, things you can do. But basically, you just have to imagine that the A10 Mini needs an ethernet connection, but it doesn't care about where that what's on the other end of that ethernet connection. So um, in, in actually in the in the launch videos, they were um, demoing Blackmagic was demoing using the A10 Mini with um, by by tethering your laptop's internet connection over USB or over Ethernet. So you plug in the Ethernet to the A10 Mini, plug that into your laptop, share the connection, and then your laptop's Wi-Fi can um, can be can be used by the A10 Mini. That's probably the simplest way to do it. Um, there's some other solutions as well if you want to start using other uh, hardware. So you can use like a, a Wi-Fi to Ethernet bridge. I think they're usually called travel routers. Um, anyway, I've got a couple of those I'm going to try out and and go through some tutorials on how to set those up. Because, yeah, you totally can do it. Um, keep in mind, though, that the speed is going to be worse on Wi-Fi no matter what. Ethernet's always better. You get a lot more interference on Wi-Fi, so there's always going to be some risk there of the signal dropping out. The good news is the A10 Mini Pro has a really good um, has a buffer, and it can actually store and push back up uh, if, if it starts dropping frames. So the viewers may not see too much of a of a of a delay there um of skipping um so uh julio says to connect the ipad to the ATEM mini you are using now can it be any ipad model can i use an old ipad um hi from mexico uh hello thank you for joining and yeah um probably anything's gonna work as long as it's outputting a signal that the the ATEM mini can read and it can read a wide variety of signals um, Johannes says, "What which app are you using to display the counter on your iPad? I think it's just called Countdown. Basically, I just found like the first free app in the App Store um, that was um, a countdown app. And it's just a full screen countdown, nothing, not much to it. Um, and then uh, again, I'm using a flying key and a uh, crop to position it smaller than the full screen up in the top of the screen. That's all built into the A10 Mini. Um, we talked about Daryl's mix minus uh, Corey. I'm concerned about audio and video sync. Uh, is there any way other than a delay to get a good sync when streaming? The best thing you can do is run your audio through your camera because then your camera outputs audio and video in sync 
already and you don't have to worry about it. That's the easiest way to do it. If you can't run audio through your camera for some reason, then you're going to need an external interface that can add a delay. It's only a few frames of delay. It's not much, but it is, it is noticeable. So um, it also, because it also depends on the camera. Some cameras actually output more or less of a delay over HDMI themselves. So you have to be able to compensate for that, whatever the camera is doing. That's why it's sort of easiest to deal with if you just have the camera output an in-sync signal to begin with. Um, the uh, other thing I will say, though, is that um, the, 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 the camera, so what was I saying? The camera audio... Um, Totally lost my train of thought. Don't know what I was saying. Cool. Um, Tim says, I'm looking for a new audio recorder, audio interface, must have delay feature recommendations. Um, so unfortunately, I haven't found one that I'm like all in on recommending. The reason is because it seems like there's plenty of, of decent audio interfaces um, that don't have delay and they're affordable. However, um, Oh no, that's not uh, what I wanted to see. <laughs> uh, remember, this is my computer screen, so anytime my computer screen has a pop-up, this is why I don't like computers for live streaming. By the way, um, let me uh, let me let me take a look at this. So, in the background, I was actually installing the Blackmagic software update so that I could use it on, uh, so I can actually update this second ATEM and. That update did not work, so that's awesome. Um, and I don't know why the installer failed. So let me just go back and try to restart it because I want to. I want to make sure that I can actually update the software when we are. Uh, oh, I do have a two two. Okay, I think it may have just crashed when it. Uh, it was like trying to finish or something. So ATEM software control A22 is now installed and I want to, um, yeah, I will get back to that. But I just wanted to be able to run through the update process, updating my test ATEM mini uh, live so we can test out the new features. Back to the chat. Um, audio interface with delay feature. Yeah, so it seems like once you add a delay feature to an audio interface, the price goes up a lot. So I have one that's like $600. It's great. Uh, I think it's a Zoom F6, F4, F6. It's it's not the newest one. I forget the model number. Um, it's great. It has an audio delay feature. Cool. Um, but uh, it does, it's expensive. So like if you buy a $300 switcher, I really can't say go buy a $600 audio mixer to go with that. Um, there is a Behringer. It's not really a, like an audio. It's a, it's a, just a it's a delay line, so it's meant for feedback to, feedback killers uh, for like live venues. It's only 120 bucks. I'm getting mine tomorrow. I'm gonna try that out, and if that works, that's probably gonna be my best recommendation. However, it's nothing like an uh, audio recorder. It doesn't do any of that. It's gonna just be adding the delay. So um, uh, yeah, that's a Behringer Shark. Um, cool. So let me uh, catch up on the chat here. Um, Mark says, I hope they let you control the audio delay with one of the next software updates. Yeah, that would be the best. I like they really should have put an audio delay feature into the, the A10 mini. Um, I know it adds cost because it requires like storing and being able to buffer the audio. So it may have ended up being too expensive to add that feature, but uh, yeah. The other way to do it is, yeah, if you are using a software encoder like OBS, OBS has it built in because it's a, running on a computer and computers have infinite memory. Um, Zach says, is there a way to use the powerful graphics processing of OBS when streaming from the Mini Pro? Nah, uh, kind of. So basically you would do that the same way I'm doing the chats here. So if you want to actually stream from the Pro, which is how I like to do it, because then I get the hardware encoder and I don't have to worry about my computer randomly crashing. Um, if you want to run graphics from that, you would feed it as one of the inputs into the A10 mini. And you would either then luma key or chroma key the background out so that you can overlay it on whatever the video is showing in the A10 mini Pro. Um, 
And then at that point, like you can do whatever graphics OBS is doing as long as you're doing it on top of a black or color background that you key out, um, which is essentially what we're doing here. It's just that this is in a browser instead of OBS. Um, cool. Uh, people are wondering how did <laughs> how does the hue to the super chat work? Um, it's if this then that. If you're familiar with that, that's uh, that's basically what's happening. Is if this then that is watching the YouTube chat and then looking for super chats and then talking to my hue bulbs, which are what's lighting up my backdrop here. Um, and uh, oh, hey, Julie is on the stream too. Hi, Julie. Also uh, from I met her at this conference. Good to see you here. Um, what boom arm are you using and what microphone is it again? This is the, uh, um, I wanna, I, I'll drop a link in the, in the video, in this video later. Um, I think it's in one of my recent videos where I go through my, my setup for, um, for webinars, the boom arm. It's, it's like one step up from the cheapest one. The cheapest one is flimsy. I don't like it. And this one, all the springs are like contained inside. So there's no springs visible, which is really nice. Um, and then the mic, this mic is the Movo mic, um, which is basically like a, a cheap, cheaper version of the Rode Video Micro. Um, and I think it's decent. It's fine. Um, people are saying that I'm getting out of focus. Let's focus that again. Cool. Um, cool. Oh, Tim, I don't know what happened, but thanks for the super chat. Uh, I don't know why it's not letting me show it on the screen or changing my colors, but thank you. Um, that's very generous. Uh, Mark says the audio cutoffs are kind of abrupt and make it sound a little choppy. I wonder if I may have um, adjusted this a little bit too too aggressive when I was messing with things because um, it depends on how much ambient noise there is. Um, Cool. Zach says, uh, says, thanks. Doing something similar with expander and compressor on the input mic. Yeah, I just love that it's all built into the ATEM Mini now. This is so handy that I can do it all. Um, Kiel says, looking through your videos, which of them shows your entire setup rundown? Um, I have a couple of different like um, run-throughs of various studio configs because there I do uh, a couple of different... I have a couple of different configurations, and this is also not... Uh, I'm not at home right now. I'm in my studio. So I have, I actually haven't done a rundown of this setup yet. Um, but at home, I have a, a setup that I've been using for uh, doing uh, other, other live streams as well as like um, the webinars that I do. I have, I think I have like two or three. So um, they're usually called studio tour. Um, but I'll see if I can look that up a little bit later. Um, Cool. Uh, Seattle, uh, Seattle Friends of Fission says, I'm excited for the expander. It's not easy to configure that in OBS. Yeah, OBS is not really an audio processor. Um, it has basic audio mixing, but that's about it. So I'm super excited that the ATEM has this all built in now. Um, cool. You can uh, you can also use stuff like EBNT wireless bridges on 5 gigahertz if you have a line of sight to somewhere with wired internet. Yeah. So uh, Ubiquiti has some super amazing networking gear, and you can do like point-to-point high speed directional uh, antennas so you can get a nice link between two sites. That's fantastic if you are trying to just be remote somewhere that you can see uh, the other end, which which has a wired network connection. Um, if you're just like at a hotel using their Wi-Fi, probably it's going to be you're going to be limited and have to bump your bandwidth down a lot to make that work. Um, Big Timer is free and very good. I think that's the one I'm using. I think that's the app I'm using. Oh no, bigtimer.net. That's the web the web version. That one's great too. Yeah, it's not even an app. Um cool. Um if you do the chats, wow, um the chats really popping today. Um if you do have a question for me, please make sure to actually mention my name uh because that makes it show up highlighted in green and that's a lot easier for me to um to see. So, uh Alexander says, is there a way to record a production when the USB-C output is already used for the webcam? No. So the USB output is going to either be a USB webcam to your computer, or it's going to be a USB host to a, a drive that you plug in. There's no way to make it do both. It doesn't really work. Like if you imagine trying to plug in a USB hub 
to plug in a USB drive, but then also like run a wire to a laptop. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Like it doesn't, that's crossing, crossing streams. Um, Gina says, oh, hi, Gina. Good to see you here. Um, Gina says, do you do something for acoustic treatment? I'm planning to, I don't yet. This is like probably the worst possible environment for audio right now. I've got two flat walls along the side here. And then um, the back wall doesn't have sheetrock on it yet. So uh, it's actually just got exposed insulation, which is probably helping a little bit. Um, but this is, this is not ideal. I'm planning on doing actual sound panels and stuff in here, but um, I'm not done with this space yet. It's still very much under construction. And uh, I don't want to do too much on the walls before I have to go and like paint everything. Um, uh, Aaron says, I wonder if the firmware update will help me with using ATEM Mini Pro in Zoom. I'm still getting huge delays, one to two seconds. So this is something I've been seeing happen a lot with some people. Um, the uh, if you are if your audio and video are uh, are in sync in the in the ATEM Mini, which you can verify by like plugging in an HDMI monitor and listening with headphones or some other way of actually checking the what's going on in the ATEM Mini itself. If that's in sync. And then in your computer, you're getting out of sync or delays. The problem is the link between the ATEM Mini and the computer. And no amount of fiddling with delays on the, on the inputs is going to solve that because that is not going to be a consistent experience. It's not going to be a consistent delay. Chances are what's going on is something is introducing a delay inside of the computer itself. Um, the biggest culprit of this is going to be bad USB hubs. So USB hubs are like if you get cheap ones they are really poorly built and do not handle a lot of bandwidth and this is basically maxing out usb2 this is maxing out the bandwidth available um so you really need to like have it all available there um the best thing you can do is plug in the atem mini directly into your computer no hubs involved so get a usb-c cable plug it into your laptop try that and that probably will get rid of the, the delays now, if you absolutely have to plug it into a USB hub and you like insist on not and only having like one cable running into your computer because it makes the desk look a lot better and not just like this giant mess of, of wires. If you insist on doing that, you're going to need a very good USB hub and uh, like don't don't cheap out on buying a USB hub. You're going to need one that's like got Thunderbolt and like multiple you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on that. Like these these docks I've seen anywhere from like three hundred dollars and up. Once you start getting the ones that are really powerful, that can drive monitors and have USB, and um, that will that will clean it up. So I have heard people having good luck with um, with external monitor or with external with docks in the ATM Mini if it's a good quality dock. So that's that's the that's the trick there. Um, Tim says, I enjoyed your video at the dance hall with your bike rig. Yeah, thanks. That was a lot of fun. Um, that was one of the, one of the first videos I did, um, on this channel, actually. Uh, that was a lot. That was a good time. My bike, that bike's actually what I rode over here on. I just carried, um, 40 pounds of C stands over here, uh, this morning on my bike. So that was fun. Um, and yeah. Obviously, I'm not doing that many live uh, conference recording gigs right now because nobody's doing in-person conferences. Um, Sebastian says, can you please show how to switch media in the media manager via macros? Yeah, I can. So let's actually talk about macros for a minute because that's a huge amount of what I'm doing here. So this is um, like what I'm looking at when I'm running this and you can see uh, so we've got my, this is my multi-view. This is actually the same thing. Again, this is, um, if you remember that diagram, that horrible diagram that I showed, which I don't actually think clear anything up. Um, this is actually the A10 mini is plugged into this. And then this is just making it bigger over here so I can see it better, but this is so I can get audio out. Um, I'm controlling everything from this iPad. So what's going on here is there's all these buttons focus. Focus, you can do it. There we go. All these buttons that I can tap, which actually just run macros. So this app is called Strata Macros, and um, all it does is it reads the macros in from the A10 Mini and provides them as buttons. So then to create those, um, 
you have to uh, go into the into the software control and and deal with it here. So let me make sure that I'm not messing up my my live one. So I'm going to go switch over to and also let me switch to uh, this. Nope. Nope. Too many buttons. That one. Um, let me switch over to the the other A10 Mini. So here's my test one. So I can actually mess with this. And uh, now I'm going to actually make it so that the thing in the corner you're seeing is the multi view from the test mini. So you can see that when I switch angles here, um, you're seeing the output of that. Uh, and then let me go and um, no, great. Okay, that's big enough. I can't make it bigger easily. Sorry about that. Um, so the uh, the trick to macros is you're never gonna like be able to get it right by just recording it live. So if you look at the uh, the list of macros here, um, you can like say uh, if you want to do like picture in picture or whatever, um, you'd give it a name and then like press all the buttons on the on the screen and it'll record all those button presses. Um, inevitably, you're going to do something wrong. You're going to want to change the order of some of the button presses, and you'll, you would have to re-record it. The um, instead of re-recording, if you actually just save out your uh, your ATEM settings, then it'll save everything as an XML file. And if you only care about the macros, just check the macros box here, click save, and that creates an XML file with all the stuff in it. So uh, here's what I here's what I just exported. Here's all the macros that are in this test A10 mini, and now you can see that. Don't worry about like it looks like code. Don't worry about it. It's not that bad to deal with. What you do is you say, oh, here's the macro I just recorded. Uh, Pre-roll, for example. Here's all the buttons I pressed. Each one of those is every time you did something in the interface, it recorded a line, and then you like you're like, oh, okay, well, I actually don't want. Uh, I want to I want to adjust the audio settings before. I mess with the video, so then you can just reorder them. Um, one of the things I like to do is add some delays in here because once you switch, um, when you start moving the keyer around, like moving the DVEs and stuff, and then try to also switch to that, it it takes like a frame or two to actually like have it sync up. So I like to before I put like the key on the air, I like to add a delay so that. It gives it a little bit of chance to actually catch up, and then you don't see it skipping. Um, so your actual question was, um, how do we do switch media? So I have no idea how, like, what XML to write. But it turns out it doesn't matter. Um, oh, hey, thanks for the super chat. Let's go back to back to the chat. Um, thank you very much. For the super chat. That's very generous. Um, and now my lights are fun color. Um, so the the that one. Nope. I did this backwards again. That's the one I want. Okay. Um, so I have no idea what XML to write, right? So the, what you do is you go and you record a macro and you say um, me, uh, media change, media record, put it here. Now you're recording, and then you go and you actually do it. So let's let's go and grab another graphic in here, um, which is going to be, where, where do I have a graphic I can load in? Um, oh gosh, I, I should have prepared, prepared a second graphic. Oh, let me just, um, here, I have a test graphic. So let's drag this in to media slot two, and then you would uh, you would go and do this. So I'm dragging it over to the media player, and that's going to set media slot two as the active media player. Stop recording. Save this uh, as media two. Only save only save the macros, and if we go look at that file media two, we only care about this. And now we can see what it did. We can see that it says media player source still index was index one. And then you can go and pull this into the actual macro you were building 
which let's say it was this one. And oh, sure enough, it actually was. That was my start program. Um, but that's how you would then plug it into where you actually wanted the macro to appear in your code. And then you restore your settings from this file and, uh, and it works. So that's uh, the process. And that's how I've been building all these macros that I'm using in the program. Um, cool. Let me go back to the chat to make sure I'm not like, haven't ever blown everything up. Um, cool. So we got a bunch more questions here. We're almost out of time. Let me see if um, I do want to try out the new firmware because I promised you all I would do that. Uh, and the other thing I promised was the chat, which we did talk about. Um, so uh, audio questions. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, OK, so let's take a, yeah, let's take a look at the firmware. Um, and to do that, let me switch over to this laptop, this other laptop, which is here. Cool. And I want myself back in the corner. There it is. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is my, this is the laptop that was running chat over here, right? So I've got my other screen with the, the software here, which is now version 8.2.2. And um, I'm going to install this not on the one running the stream because that would be bad. I'm going to install it on my test A10 mini, which is um, actually what you're seeing the uh, computer screen from. So that's going to be interesting to see how that deals with it. Uh, in order to do that, though, I actually need to. Um, I grabbed a USB cable. This is the thing I hate about USB. Um, turns out, like USB cables can sometimes carry only power and not also data, and there's no way to tell. So I grabbed a USB cable this morning, and it was just a power cable. So I had to find one here, and the one that I found that I have in the studio is this long, and that means I have to get my computer that close to the ATEM to install the update. So. Let's just show you this. What I'm going to do here, unplug this laptop, leave the HDMI plugged in, which is plugged into this test mini. And then this is now close enough to plug in USB. Great. Um, so you are seeing, you are seeing uh, me. And I want to make sure that you're actually seeing my wide angle. So back to the live ATEM mini on my desk, my real desktop and switch to that angle. OK. So um, yeah, this is the yes, this is the new A22. And I should now be installed on uh, on that ATEM mini. I have to go into the setup because that's a different app. And yeah, I've got a USB connection. So we should be able to, yes, update. Would you like to update your switcher now? Uh, let's do it. So this is going to uh, hopefully not break everything. Yeah, that went black because this is now actually updating. And uh, here we go. Cross your fingers that everything works. I hope I hope I'm not breaking it. Um, it says, please don't unplug the switcher while, while updating. 36%, 39%, 40%. Um, funny story, I was uh, downloading this software right before the live stream started, and it was um, it was taking like hours to install the software because it's so big. So uh, I'm glad it finished just in time, even though we got that weird error message uh, that popped up under the chat. That was cool. But at least it did install. So um, cutting close there. OK, 60%. Um, I can't really switch to the chat now because the chat was running off of this other laptop, but I can uh, at least read the chat over here. Um, will Ultravite says, will video ever be included for the overlay feature in the mini? Um, so it kind of is already. And what I mean by that is, um, see if I can do this while, while this is still running. So I was, I mostly use the upstream keyer because you get the flying key feature. So you can actually like, um, like I can, I can turn this on and like show other camera angles, right? So that is video overlay. 
You can also do this with the downstream keyer. So you can actually do two of these. And the downstream keyer you can use to like overlay um, graphics, but you can also use it to overlay video. So if you just use like, this is, mm, yeah, let's try this, main camera. Um, so if we show the downstream key uh, on air, oh, it's actually trying to key it. Um, so it's doing a, I think it's doing a Luma key. Yeah, so you can see it's, my, my black shirt is transparent. Um, but if you just go all, all, all the way to 100% like that, then it's uh, not blocked out. And then you can start cropping it. So you can say like minus eight, right? Now the limitation with the downstream key is that you can't move it. You, you can just crop it, um, which is why you pretty much only use it for like logos and stuff. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do video overlays. Uh, cool. Okay. The switcher has updated and it is ready to use. So, um, switch back to that angle. Yep. Cool. And nope, wrong one. This one. Okay. Uh, switcher is complete and it is ready to use. So, the, um, yes, thank you. Features in the update um, should be two things. So uh, they added better support for external monitors. So there was this problem that I've had actually with um, this, this monitor is one of the culprits. And my A10 Mini Pro does not work with this. The A10 Mini did, uh, the Pro did not. So, um, what I'm hoping is that this update has in fact now fixed this problem because this is such a good size and I want to use this monitor above my camera as the multi-view uh, instead of having it on the desk here. So let's find out if it works. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to unplug my, um, unplug my audio, my video. So the multi-view or the multi-view out from this mini um, I'm going to unplug that so we should see it drop off the screen. Good, I unplugged the right thing. Always a good idea to test in production. And let me extract... Oof, no, that cable is too, too deep. Let me do it the other way around. I'm going to unplug this end. And grab another HDMI cable. And I don't need... I don't need the... I don't need this plugged in anymore. Okay. Get rid of that. If I can put this back over here. Everything is very, very precarious. Okay, plug in the new HDMI cable to the output. And with any luck, it's gonna work. And I'm really hoping, really hoping it does. Because um, I have not found any of these small monitors that actually work with this yet. Um, so, so far, uh, oh, no, it's doing it again. See, no signal. Um, but let me go switch over to the, the test network, the test one. And over here, yeah, so over here, we've got all these video settings. And I think this is what they were supposed to have fixed when we changed the video settings. I think some monitors are more picky about what signals they get. This is not looking good. Not looking good. Let me try 30 frames per second. Uh, still nothing. So, um, not, not promising, but cool. Let's look at the other fe new feature. Plug back into the, uh, stream so you can actually see what I'm doing. And switch to the, the ATEM. So this is now the preview of, or rather the multi-view of the test a10 mini and um there is supposed to be a new feature on here and i can't quite tell what it is they said they made some improvements to what it looks like and i was hoping it was gonna be pretty obvious but i am not seeing anything uh different about my two multi-views does anybody can anybody spot what looks different here I'm not seeing it Okay. Did I actually install 822? That is the question. Pretty sure I did. 
Well, testing in production, um, always a good, always a good idea, because you never know what's going to happen. But that's why we do these things live. So uh, it's fun, right? Um, cool. Let me go back to the chat so I can actually do that, uh, do that right, and back over to the main camera. Show the chat. Show the chat, which is that laptop input. Um, Mark says, need to run. Thanks for sharing. Uh, thank you for joining, Mark. And something I did, something I did with my keyer messed up the chat overlay. I'm not sure what happened there. Cool. Um, yeah, what's going on? What's going on there? Luma key mask. Got the clip. Maybe the clip is wrong. Weird. It was working fine earlier. Okay. It's fine. Um, oh, uh, cast ministry says, uh, thank you for the super chat very much. Um, Question, have you ever used Roll-In Mixer products with the streaming features built in with Ecamm OBS versus ATEM Mini Pro with Ecamm OBS? How do they compare? Um, Roll-In Mixer products, by that do you mean, um, by that do you mean the Roland like actual physical mixers? I have like only one, or I, I guess I have two of them, um, but, the uh yeah the uh if you if if that's what you mean let me know um the so the rolling mixers um i haven't used the giant ones like they, they make giant ones with a bunch of inputs um so they have like most of the ones i've used are like i guess mini versions of this where that's just a just doing the switchers i haven't used one with the built-in streaming um and then those do like hardware video out like hdmi out so um i would say like the mini just does a lot more and it has more stuff built in um which is why i like using it so much the um so i have also tried out obs and ecamm live and they're great great pieces of software obs is amazing because it's free like Definitely cannot discount that. You really do need a powerful computer to make that work well. If you've got more than just like one camera coming in, then um, you need a powerful computer to run OBS. Um, Cast Ministries is saying, yeah, the VR50 HD or V1 HD. I've used the V1 HD. I have not used the VR50. The 50 is the big one. Um, and yeah, they are... Uh, they're great. They're they're good hardware switchers, but the A10 Mini also has built-in streaming and USB webcam out, USB recording. Um, so it's it's a hard it's a hard sell. Those things are so much more expensive too. Um, cool. So Ledger Status says they fixed the HDMI issue we were having discussed in Photo Joseph's stream. Um, I'm curious to see. Let me know which specific issue because. Um, the issue I was talking about was the some of my monitors aren't recognized by the Pro, and I can't figure out why. Um, yeah, it's supposed to add frame rate conversion to HDMI out, which is why I thought that was going to work. So, eh. uh, Seattle Friends of Fission says, test in production. That's what we do here. Um, Zach says, I had to take a call about doing a podcast for someone, and I was away from the stream for 20 minutes. Please post this for viewing later. Well, thanks for coming back and joining again, Zach. Um, Mark says, I can't believe you're still on the air after all that unplugging. Yeah. Well, that's why I have two of these, because I didn't want to unplug the live one. Um, does your chat macro work for uh, Facebook Live or just made for YouTube? So this is just made for YouTube because um, it's actually loading. Like, this is actually the, the YouTube chat web page. This is not doing anything else. This is just loading up the chat website. Um, and then restyling things. So you could definitely build one for Facebook um, because it doesn't have to, it's not using an API or anything. Um, so you could definitely do it in Facebook. You just have to change the CSS to adapt to Facebook's chat CSS. It's a good exercise to do though. So if you do end up doing that, um, 
let me know in the on the GitHub, and uh, you know, I'll I'll add I'll add more resources there. Ledger Santa says my multi-view bottom record screen stream screens froze on me, so I hope that's what they fixed. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't realize that that was the problem. I have never seen that problem. Uh, that does sound bad, so I'm glad they fixed that. Uh, Victor says my HTML Pro just arrived. Super excited to get it all set up. Uh, question: I use a shotgun mic connected to a Zoom H5 via XLR cable, and uh, then the question is: Can I connect the microphone via via a mic jack? Um, so yeah, there's two ways to get. Uh, if you if you aren't running audio through the camera, then you will have a delay unless your audio interface has the delay compensate feature. If if it can add delay, um, I don't think the Zoom H5 does. So your best bet is going to be to run the Zoom H5 into the camera. Um, that's going to depend on whether the Zoom H5 has a output that matches your camera's out. So there's mic or line level, and you have to make sure they, ma they match. Um, and that's not always guaranteed. So uh, this camera that I'm using right now actually does not have, uh, it only accepts mic level. My, my fancier camera can switch between accepting mic or line level on the three and a half inch, or uh, three and a half millimeter input. So take a look at your camera to see which one that is and whether you can also switch the audio interface into outputting either of those levels. Um, we are uh, coming up on on the top of the hour. And oh, uh, Francesco says, thanks for making all the valuable in-depth tutorials. Thank you so much for the super chat. I uh, really appreciate it. I should uh, probably wrap this thing up, even though uh, I did not get to all the questions in the chat. You all are just... Um, Great. Thank you all so much for joining. And um, I'm going to do this again next week because there's clearly a lot to talk about. And um, I should also mention before I go, I should mention that if you do want to, um, if you do want to ask more questions later throughout the week before we get back to this, um, take a look at. So uh, John Barker from Here to Record and I actually just launched a forum and the forum is uh, forum.livevideotech.today. Take a look there, and we've got a bunch of active discussions going on, and that's a great place to go to ask questions where you go get help from other people as well. And um, it's also a fun place to post photos of your whole setups and talk about your, your rigs. So definitely take a look at that. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining. I um, don't have time to do any take any, any more questions this week, but um, thank you for joining and join me again next week for more of uh, more ATM Mini Talk and have a great rest of the day. <laughs>